Hello there, and welcome to another edition of the Free West Media video channel. Today's topic is uh, how the Nelson Mandela Foundation glorifies black violence. Now that sounds rather odd because uh, the Nelson Mandela Foundation gets a lot of money from various major companies and corporations from around the world. They're rolling in the money. Uh, they have an office in one of the most expensive areas of Johannesburg, a suburb called Houghton. And today I was supposed to have a, an interview with them, with the CEO of the foundation, someone by the name of Selo Hatong. But somehow, as often happens in South Africa, uh, when you have to do with government officials and other kind of darker VIPs, is that, uh, you know, they were simply AWOL at 4.30 when the interview was supposed to be taking place. I'll actually show you some WhatsApp messages of how we had arranged uh, the interview for 4.30 today, but then nothing happened. So now I'm simply going to interpret for you what the Nelson Mandela Foundation actually says when it comes to the violence, the riots, and you know the burning, arson, and other forms of violence, even terrorism. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know the Nelson Mandela Foundation's view about such violence. In fact, that, that, that was the element that had intrigued me in the first place because, you know, the money quote from their statement that they released last week was uh, the following words by Nelson Mandela himself. He said during his famous trial in 1964, the Ravonia trial, he said the following, I do not, however, deny that I planned sabotage. I did not plan it in a spirit of recklessness, nor because I have any love of violence. I planned it as a result of a calm and sober assessment of the political situation that had arisen after many years of tyranny, exploitation, and oppression of my people by the whites. Unquote. That's Nelson Mandela in his own words, the, the great saboteur and terrorist. And then the Nelson Mandela Foundation says immediately after that, the use of violence can be rational and carefully targeted as part of a strategy to counter structural and other forms of violence against black lives. And of course, it always ought to be so. And then they go, go on to say that protesters in the U.S. are signaling that enough is enough. So they are saying that the moment has come now for black people worldwide to become violent, as did Nelson Mandela in the early 1960s. And they have to uh, operate against what is termed white supremacy. In fact, in the initial paragraph of their statement, they talk about a growing rage across the globe at a continued white supremacy and the use of state violence to support it. And further on, they talk of a resilient white supremacy. So, white supremacy is supposed to be resilient and they claim that even in South Africa uh, there is such a thing as yes, as white supremacy. According to them, 
Now is the time for sober assessment of a resilient white supremacy in our country, in the U.S., and globally. We need to reckon with the fact that structural and other forms of violence will provoke violence. Okay, so black violence is justified because of white supremacy. They also refer to um, Adama, Daore in France, and of course George Floyd in the United States. And that to, needs one, leads one to ask a couple of questions. You know, for example, we know that uh, in the late 1960s, early 1970s, there were black terrorist movements in the United States. There were, there were the Black Panthers, and then an offshoot from them was called the Black Liberation Army. And there was a woman, um, she first had an English name, her surname was Byron, actually, as, the, you know, the same surname as the uh, English poet, Lord Byron. But she later on changed her name, she Africanized it, or Islamicized it, she called herself Asata Shakur. And she and some others killed a policeman in the early 1970s in the United States. And she is still listed as a wanted terrorist in the United States. She was actually sentenced for her crime. and But then she escaped in about 1979. And she then sought uh, political asylum in Cuba, which she got. But um, I suspect that she is actually currently living in South Africa. And the reason why I'm saying that is because a few years ago there was a, an article in a major Sunday newspaper belonging to the Naspash Group, uh, City Press it's called, and she wrote a, an opinion piece in that newspaper saying the white man is not your friend. And that was addressed to black South Africans, telling them that the white man is not your friend. And, you know, I objected to that and, and I actually laid a, uh, a complaint with the press council in South Africa and then they allowed me uh, to actually write, l write a response to that in that newspaper. But nothing was said again about this individual called Asata Shakur, but I doubt whether she's still in Cuba. I think she's living in South Africa, probably with the aid of the authorities here. And she's having a nice life, you know, as, as a kind of a retired uh, black terrorist. And... What the Mandela Foundation is calling for now is a kind of resurgence of these extremist groups from the early 1970s, such as the Black Liberation Army. They want uh, blacks to commit violence on an ever larger scale, in order to actually, yeah, to overthrow white supremacy, as it's called, which means uh, essentially the overthrow of the entire Western system. And we know, of course, that in one of the, the you know, books or treatises regularly quoted by our own politicians in South Africa, but also in the United States, in France and elsewhere. The writings of Franz Fanon, he held that um, the experience of colonialism, and you could call it white supremacy as well, will only be cleansed through violence. 
So violence is necessary to overthrow white supremacy, but also to cleanse black people of their past experience of subjugation. And of course, South Africa is probably the most violent country in the world where the most sadistic forms of violence in the form of farm murders, and rapes and you know, vicious attacks are carried out all the time. In fact, the ANC um, represent a kind of a model for this type of uh, anti-white black violence also committed against more conservative black people in the form of their uh, terrorist activities, which they refer to as their armed struggle. And towards the late 1970s, early 1980s, and later on, also in the early 90s, they practiced a form of violence which they called people's war. And that is calculated to, through terror and extreme violence, including the necklace method, which Mrs. Winnie Mandela advocated, in order to terrorize your own kind in such a way that they support you, that they don't think of supporting any, any other movement besides your movement, because they would simply be too terrified to do so. And I think this is what the Nelson Mandela Foundation is driving at, that they want to see a new phase in the outbreak of the violence worldwide, both in the U.S. and in Europe, uh, to become a kind of a people's war, where through terror, terror and extreme sadism, such as we see a lot in South Africa, but that must be exported to other countries, other Western countries in particular, uh, in order to subjugate them to these radical movements. Uh, well, the ANC, of course, has always been a very radical movement, Afro-Marxist and violent terrorist. So uh, people might think that this sounds you know, far-fetched, but as we've seen over the last few weeks, nothing is far-fetched anymore. And a lot of the more elderly or more liberal or left-wing people in Western countries, they simply want this violence to end. And, and they are prepared to go to any lengths. They will lie on the ground. They will prostrate themselves. They will go on their knees. They will beg for mercy. They will... Um, apologize. They will apologize for themselves, for their culture, for their history, for the very fact that they are white. They will do anything to try and stop the escalation of this violence. But of course, nothing will stop it, and a lot of the more sinister uh, leaders and movements, such as the Nelson Mandela foundation, they are behind an escalation of the violence and the ideology of black nationalism, of a kind of a racial nationalism that underlies this movement, the so-called Black Lives Matter movement. But of course, Black lives don't matter, white lives don't matter, no lives matter for this movement. In fact, you know, the media, uh, among others, don't even report on the most of the violence taking place in South Africa. Most of the people who are killed, children who are killed, uh, tortured, uh, such as the Portuguese Viana family, who were tortured to death south of Johannesburg with a 12-year-old child drowned in boiling water. All those kinds of things are hardly even reported. We only hear 
about the unfortunate death of George Floyd and a few others that are being exploited as uh, martyrs in the cause of this violent international Afrocentric terrorist movement which Black Lives Matter has become. Now, you might say that this is a a one-sided interpretation of the statement put out by the Nelson Mandela Foundation, but I gave them the opportunity to put their side of how they see things, and they declined it in quite, uh, I would say, with quite a lot of journalistic etiquette. So this is the interpretation that we must put onto their recent statement, that they do want to glorify uh, violence and terrorism as practiced by both the ANC and Nelson Mandela himself. Thank you very much for listening to this video. Uh, We are going to have more videos coming up shortly, so please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Until next time, goodbye.